Hello and welcome to Tag One Team Talks, the blog and podcast of Tag One Consulting. We're commemorating the 20th anniversary of Drupal with an interview series featuring community leaders talking about their Drupal experience. My guest today is Fred Place, the co-founder and CEO of Platform SH. I'm Michael Myers, the managing director at Tag One. Tag One's the number two all-time contributor to Drupal. Uh, we build large-scale applications for global 500s and large organizations in every sector with Drupal, as well as many other technologies. And we're one of the few official providers of Drupal 7 extended support. Uh, so if you want to continue running Drupal 7 after it goes end of life next year, please reach out. Uh, I'm really excited to have Fred on the show today. Uh, Fred's worked with so many large organizations, L'Oreal, Vodafone. Uh, for those of you in the Drupal community, you probably best know Fred as the general manager of AF83, which was a multinational agency uh, specializing in e-commerce as well as many other things. And before uh, co-founding Platform SH, Fred was the co-founder and CEO of Commerce Guys, uh, which is today uh, Centauro. And that's a really interesting story that we're going to get into. Uh, Fred, thank you so much for, for joining me today and for sharing your Drupal journey. Welcome. Hi, Michael. Thank you very, very much for having me. Definitely. So I figured, you know, let's set the stage a little bit, talk, talk about your background and your career in the community, uh, and then we'll dive more into, you know, Drupal itself and talking about the platform. Um, but I'm curious to get us started. You know, uh, you've been in the Drupal community for over 12 years now. How did you first discover Drupal? Uh, I first discovered Drupal uh, in Paris when I was actually running a, an agency called the AF83. At the time, we the, the agency was actually building uh, social networks. Uh, back in 2009, uh, we had this vision that um, uh, brands to actually uh, uh, elevate their, their branding and, and to engage their users and customers should build communities. Uh, and um, and at some point, you know, I'm not my background is not technical. I've been building products and uh, and uh, I've been in the web development industry for a long, long time, but more as a, as in the product side of things and more on the business side of things. And uh, you know, I had this uh, <clears throat> this uh, good friend who came to me and said, "Hey, look, you know, there's this." Uh, amazing um, uh, CMS um, called Drupal uh, and on that Drupal thing you know you can actually build uh, uh, you can build Facebook uh, by just assembling uh, you know a core and modules and it's very granular you can actually bring things together and you know you actually build web differently than the way you know people used to build web before by this uh, module approach and I thought it was actually fascinating, you know, to be fair, Facebook in 2009 is not Facebook you know, in 2021. So it was a way less sophisticated um, uh, web property. And, and, uh, and there was just potentially there was, you know, three or four features that were really uh, important in Facebook. So, you know, it was just not, so, you, you know, just to, to understand the scale, it was uh, not, not, um, not so hard to build, but still, you know, it was very real and, you know, it was, uh, the nature of the of the uh, CMS and the the thousands of modules that were there and the uh, open source nature uh, that struck me as something very very unique and uh, and very meaningful. Uh, and uh, you know, so that's how I discovered it. Uh, and then um, you know, my uh, uh, my partner in crime, Ori Peckerman, uh, who's been my my partner for like thirteen years in all, many different businesses. Uh, you know, who's, who's actually uh, very, very vested in open source. He's been uh, uh, involved in open source since, uh, I would say, since ever. Um, and um, uh, very interested and curious and in getting into communities, he decided to actually uh, get involved in the Drupal community because he thought also that he was very meaningful and uh, decided to take the responsibility of running DrupalCon Paris. Uh, and organizing it, uh, and I think that was back in 2009, and that's when I really understood Drupal, what it was about more than this uh, modular uh, um, framework, uh, but you know, it was really a community as well, very vibrant, it was very, very smart people, uh, we got engaged uh, and uh, you know, financially engaged because like, you know, the fun story about this uh, conference is uh, we had a blocked account with PayPal uh, on which there were almost $100,000 that we couldn't we couldn't release, and uh, so we've been at huge stress because we were you know 
very engaged financially in this first uh, DrupalCon. But you know, this DrupalCon in the end, we managed to un unleash the, um, the uh, to remove the problem with PayPal, and we 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 got a great event, and uh, it was just amazing vibes. So uh, that's really how I discovered you know back in two thousand nine. Uh, the uh, the Drupal community, the, the Drupal uh, framework, and uh, how I got excited. Wow, I, uh, I, I vividly remember DrupalCon Paris. Um, uh, I've, I've been to many, many DrupalCons over the years. It is one of my favorites for, for so many reasons. I forgot all about the, the PayPal story. And, and the irony is PayPal also used Drupal <laughs> X.com for many years too, uh, though I, I think that might have been a little later on. Um, so uh, I, I talked to Robert Douglas. I, I had the opportunity to interview him uh, a little while back and, you know, he touched on a little bit, but it was really fascinating, you know, how uh, AF83 kind of, you know, incubated or gave birth to Commerce Guys and, and then, you know, the, the how that, you know, in some ways transitioned to Platform SH. I'd really love to learn more about that because it, it sounded like an amazing story and he just only touched on it. How are uh, how are all of these things related and how did one, you know, sort of transition or lead to the other? Sure. Yeah. No. The, the um, you know the short story is you know we, we uh, at the time uh, again very involved in web development, very involved, uh, starting to get involved in Drupal, uh, and we we met uh, Ryan Rama and, and his team, and um, uh, the the fit was great. You know, we we love those guys, and uh, they were doing e-commerce with uh, with Drupal, uh, and it really rang a bell uh, in sense in the sense that you know what we were seeing on the marketplace as well. You know, we we. We were uh, very interested in social networks, but you know, quite curious in general. And we were seeing this need uh, that is still a very important need. Uh, you know, where on the web industry, you know, you get to talk with uh, two sort of people: people doing transactions and people doing content. Um, if I want to, you know, just uh, take a very big shortcut on on, <laughs> on 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 this, it's a little bit approximate, but you know, it's still still true. And and people building content. They, uh, they get the traffic, right? They manage to, they get this ability to create traffic on, on the web, uh, but they can't monetize really well. I mean, you know, if advertisement was a way to monetize a, a website, we would uh, all be very rich. Uh, and uh, on the other end, there are people actually doing transactions and they can monetize really, really well, but they don't get so much of the traffic. And so, you know, the, the dream was to be able to actually combine content and commerce together so you would have, uh, you know, the traffic and the conversion and, and the transactions that go with it. Uh, and so, you know, on that vision, we thought, well, commerce, um, commerce and Drupal together, that's actually extremely exciting. And at the time, Ryan had uh, built Hypercard and they were delivering services around uh, Hypercard, which was built for Drupal 5 and 6. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was, it was a very, very decent piece of work and it was... Uh, uh, very convincing, <clears throat> but you know Drupal seven was coming, and in the team, you know, getting interested in uh, in Drupal, we we had done this, uh, and I didn't realize at the time how important this recruitment would be. But you know, we had recruited this uh, this very impressive brain um, uh, and 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 human person, uh, human, yeah, and and human being, uh, Damien Tourneau, who is currently my CTO, so and and a partner in crime now for more than ten years. But Damien was our Drupal expert in house, and, and uh, he was actually very involved in Drupal 7 at the time. Uh, he was considered as one of the key architects of the, uh, of the software, very, very involved in the community. Uh, Damien is very, very sharp and, and smart and, and uh, uh, had some very brilliant ideas on, on how to build Drupal 7 right. Um, and uh, we thought, well, you know, this is an amazing opportunity. We are, we are seeing, uh, we need, you know, Drupal 7 is coming to birth. Uh, with a ton of different, uh, you know, super exciting uh, new approaches. Uh, let's build commerce from scratch. Let's, let's build commerce from there, uh, day one, and make sure that it perfectly integrates with core and perfectly integrates with everything else. So that's how we, we, uh, we thought, okay, we, we need a new version of, uh, of, uh, of, of Ubercart. Uh, it's going to be a drastic change, so let's rename it. And we came up with Drupal Commerce, which was an obvious one, you know, which uh, could actually <laughs> could actually highlight you know the fact that yeah it's Drupal and yes it's commerce and it's content and transactions all together and uh, that that was actually what you know the, the the vision we had and I got so excited about the vision that I I found a way to actually uh, deal with my uh, previous partner at AFS3 to actually uh, uh, just uh, spin up um, um, a company uh, and to comp and acquire the uh, 
uh, the the company that uh, Ryan and and, uh, and his team were were running at the time uh, in the US, and so we made just one big company. When I mean big, not big, but you know bigger company, with uh, people in Europe, people in the US, uh, and uh, that's how we got the commerce guy story started based on the you know rebuilding commerce on Drupal. Uh, so yeah, I'm still excited when I talk about it because I you know I, that was a great great moment and a very exciting period. It was it was huge for Drupal. I mean, still is. I mean, uh, Drupal. I don't think would be the platform it is today and have the uh, adoption that it has today without the commerce components and capabilities. And those were all driven by uh, you know you and the team over at Commerce Guys. And I love Ryan. Uh, he's a really great guy. Oh, yeah. um, and uh, so eventually, Commerce Guys uh, becomes its own company. And, you know, is uh, spun out of, you know, uh, the agency. How does Commerce Guys become Platform SH? What was the transition from, from Commerce Guys to, to Platform? Um, sure, yeah. And so, you know, the, um, um, the story gets, uh, gets better because, you know, Drupal Commerce becomes a, a hit. Uh, we're seeing a lot of adoption. Uh, we were just seeing a growing number of, uh, of Drupal site being built for commerce. Uh, you know, at the top of the, of the commerce uh, guy story, I think, you know, we were seeing like 8%, 7 or 8% of Drupal sites actually using commerce. So, you know, which, which is big because Drupal is big. And so, you know, 8% of the sites using commerce means a lot of sites were, you know, just uh, adding some e-commerce components uh, to, to their properties. Uh, so very, very interesting. And, uh, you know, we're thinking, okay, so, so you know, how can we, um, you know, how can we actually, uh, you know, deliver a product company behind that, uh, that ID? And uh, we've been, uh, we've, we've had been very interested in the cloud, you know, we, uh, since, since day one, thinking, you know, we need a cloud version of Drupal Commerce, but we want to keep the flexibility of Drupal Commerce, which is, which is really awesome and a, a huge differentiator. So we, we thought we can't, we can't, you know, we won't, uh, you know, it's not a good idea to actually build a, uh, a SaaS e-commerce platform that's going to be too restrictive and and too, uh, you know, that's the issue with SaaS, right? You know, you don't get to be flexible. You, you uh, it's click, uh, click and click and click and and you get something up uh, really quickly, uh, but you don't get to be able to you know build an experience and and just uh, you know customize whatever you think is relevant, and we wanted to keep that flexibility. So so the pass approach was was the obvious one. And so we started working on, um, on uh, you know, starting to actually split up the uh, R&D teams into two teams, uh, the Ryan-led team, which was uh, focusing on Drupal Commerce and, and building the nice, the, the nice the next features for, for commerce. And the Damien's team was actually building the PaaS, uh, the platform as a service approach that would actually fit, uh, fit Drupal Commerce. Uh, so that's how we, we started working on those initiatives. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, two years later, because it took a while before we actually could uh, could launch. And two years later, we had a, uh, a pretty amazing pass, very different to whatever uh, was out there, uh, with a, a very unique experience, a unique flavor. Uh, and you know, we we uh, we opened it up to the market, um, and that was in 2015. You know, I think uh, uh, at a, and we launched it at uh, at a Drupalcon, um, like we always do for these big launches. And so, um, uh, you know, very interestingly during the beta, you know, and very quickly on, we, uh, we were working with a lot of agencies and, and the agency was telling us, look for it, this is really great. We love Drupal Commerce, we love Drupal, uh, but you know, we also do uh, very frequently, we do other languages uh, and not just Drupal. Drupal is a big piece of what we do, but you know, we also do other things. Could we use your product, which is really, really useful uh, for other languages? And uh, since uh, Damien is Damien, Damien Tourneau is, uh, uh, you know, is a very, very smart guy. He had not engineered uh, the path specifically for Drupal, but you know, he had meant it in a quite generic way, which is also why you know, it took so, so, so long to build in the first place because he was, every, you know, he was very generic and, and very well done. Uh, and so extending to other languages was, was easy and we you know, started to respond to agency requirements to and now to you know anything PHP like Symfony is a big deal and it's a big deal in the Drupal community and a lot of people, a lot of agencies building Drupal sites also uh, you know build uh, things with uh, Symfony so we started with Symfony. Then the obvious next one was Laravel, uh, and then you know Node is a thing and and people are actually using Drupal and Node and so we decided to actually do Node very well as well, 
and Python and Ruby, and now we do Golang and we do .NET and we do Java. So, so we progressively extended to other other stacks, mm -hmm. uh, not just Drupal. Drupal is still a you know a very very central piece. We understand Drupal really well, and we've always been very very fascinated, you know, fascinated by, by by Drupal. So we we kept going on Drupal, but you know we extended to other languages, thinking. Tomorrow's world is uh, is probably not just one stack. It's probably you know combining stacks together and giving the, uh, this this flexibility to developers. So you know that's uh, that's how we've been uh, we've been actually diverging from from commerce. And at some point, you know, it was very obvious that we had uh, two businesses in one company, and those companies those those businesses required actually a, a, a specific home for each. So you know, with my my friend Ryan, we actually uh, orchestrated this uh, this split up. Uh, and uh, you know, built a, a, a brand new company for uh, uh, the Drupal Commerce uh, business to have a new home, which is called Sand Tower now, which uh, Ryan is uh, brilliantly, uh, brilliantly running uh, today. So, uh, so uh, that's how we we actually managed to to you know build two very nice independent businesses that are actually working together well, but but are not not uh, so correlated as they were in the first place. I love that story, how Centaro, you know, becomes into platform, platform gives birth to Centaro. <laughs> uh, it's pretty amazing. And, and I think, you know, I, I think it's great that you guys run more than Drupal. Uh, you know, we no longer live in a world where you can use one technology. And I think that, you know, really set platform apart early on because... Yeah. You know, a, a lot of other providers and systems, you know, were, were kind of locked into that model where even if you wanted to run Node or, or whatever it was, you know, you had to do that elsewhere. And so I think, it, you know, it really positioned you guys well for growth and fill the need. And, you know, it's, it's extremely rare today that we build a system that just uses Drupal. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, I think, I think um, you know, we, we understood that Pretty early, we thought that you know the, the future of the of the tech is multi-stack. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, not only you, you you want to use the right tool for whatever you're building, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, you know developers don't want to compromise on that. You know they they know that uh, you know if you have to to use the wrong tool to build something, the complexity is actually going up and the, the outcome is going to be less good. So they and now they have a voice in the organizations. They they can talk to IT. They are uh, respected and heard because they are so precious. You know. Uh, we are in a world where every organization is becoming a software company somehow. And uh, if you don't listen to the uh, software engineers while you're trying to build a software company, you're not, you're not going anywhere. And so, so the, the, the reality of multi-stack is, is just right here. Uh, and it's obvious. And so, uh, you know, I think we, we were, um, uh, we, we took the, the, the right decision to actually start building multi-stack from day one. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, it's not just, you know, you can pick a, pick a stack for whatever. It's really the, the combination of stacks that is striking me today. You know, yeah. the, uh, the amazing traction for head network. Uh, and it's very true with Drupal as well. I mean, it's, it makes so much sense to actually build your phone with JS but, and, uh, and make sure that you can actually fit to any screen and, and, uh, and you know, just combine the, the, the power of Drupal, which is really in the editing and uh, in the workflows and in the, in the, in the flexibility along with you know the right uh, um, UI experience and uh, and I think you know this combination of uh, Drupal headless uh, makes a ton of sense and I think I think we're uniquely positioned to uh, to support agencies and, and, and customers building uh, headless experiences uh, based on based on on a, a Drupal backend yeah no uh, undoubtedly a, a, a very smart decision. Uh, ahead of your time, you guys saw this coming and it's really well positioned you. Um, so let, let's shift gears a little bit. Um, it was, uh, you know, it, it's so good to, to learn about, you know, all the different companies and, and, and the roles they've played and the interaction, you know, and it's, it's, you know, thinking back in 20 years, you know, it's, <laughs> you know, everybody has a piece of the story. So I, you know, I, I really appreciate you sharing that. Um, I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about um, Drupal, the platform, Drupal, the community, um, you know, your thoughts and involvement in these things. Um, you know, uh, one place I always like to start is contribution. You know, you mentioned earlier, your partner is, you know, has always been part of contribution. Damien has, you know, been one of the top contributors to Drupal. Um, 
you know, one of the things that I love and I was so excited, you know, to have you on today is that you contribute meaningfully in a way that, that, you know, not enough people do. Uh, and that is financially. You guys are one of the biggest financial supporters of events of the Drupal Association. Um, and so first off, thank you. <laughs> uh, because you know we need everything. We need we need we need developers, but we need money, and we need more money than we're getting. Um, and so you know, I'm curious. You know, what motivates you guys to be such generous supporters uh, of the DA and the community in these conferences? You know, especially given that you've diversified so much. Well, you know, to to be um, uh, you know to be completely transparent with you, you know, we 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 still see Drupal as a as a very important um, uh, stack in the web development uh, options that you, you, you have. So uh, Drupal is dear to our heart because of the history and, and where we come from. And, and uh, you know, we've been through that story and we've been amazed from the very beginning from you know, both, both on the code and also on the community and on the people. And uh, you know, in a, on a more personal note, you know, I've, uh, I've met my, my co-founders in, in Drupal. I've uh, met incredible people. You mentioned Ryan's Rama. Uh, you know, Rob, Rob Douglas has been also um, uh, you know, somebody that the, the Drupal community knows well and somebody that I've been working with for almost eight years now and is just amazing. And so, you know, it's just uh, so many uh, amazing, amazing meetings. So I think, you know, we, we've got, uh, there's something about, uh, about Drupal that, you know, we, we don't have with other stacks mm -hmm. uh, at Platform SH. And so, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we're very happy to, to uh, financially support the, the community. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's a win-win because, you know, by, by doing that, we also expose our brand to the, uh, uh, to the uh, Drupalers and to the people building, uh, building applications and sites. And, uh, and so, you know, this is a, this is a, a mutually uh, beneficial um, uh, uh, contribution, I have to say. Uh, we can engage with the community. We can uh, keep uh, updated on, on, on the news and on what's happening on the, latest innovation. So, uh, you know, I think it serves both parties really well. And, uh, you know, the, um, uh, the reality for a platform like ours is, you know, we are not building a pass with, with Drupal. Uh, so we, we, we still have a little bit of Drupal in, in our stack, but it's, uh, it's, quite, uh, it's quite limited. You know, the, the team mainly, mainly develops in Python and Go. Uh, today, so so you know the the code's contributions for us are, are not that obvious since we don't use the, the the technology as much as we used to when we when we were commerce guys. It was uh, it was one hundred percent our focus, uh, you know, to to build uh, you know to build Drupal and to build Drupal cars. Uh, so things have changed over time. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think you know we we can still support uh, support the community in a, in a different way, and we're we're trying to you know to trying to to be. Um, uh, involved in as many uh, meetups as we can, and uh, uh, not only be coming to the global conferences, but also to the smaller, uh, more localized uh, conferences. And uh, and you know we, we like it very much as well. Awesome, you you've already shared so many great stories. Um, you know I, I love the PayPal freezing your wallet for DrupalCon Paris. Um, you know. Uh, thinking back over the last 12 years, um, you know, I, I'd love to hear, you know, another story or experience at a conference, you know, you know, uh, a sweet Drupal memory that sort of stands out. Uh, you know, I, one of my great memories is uh, I was, uh, I was very happy with that conference. Uh, you know, we, we had, uh, we had built this concept, which we called the, uh, the commerce village uh, in, uh, that was back in, um, I think 2014, and uh, we were actually building a, uh, we were building a, a marketplace around. You know, we're trying to get uh, you know the e-commerce world involved in Drupal, um, and uh, you know this is not a place where they, they will naturally go. Uh, while you know in e-commerce there's a there's a full ecosystem of, uh, of of layers and services that you want to you want to you need to leverage. You know things like payment gateways, uh, you know PayPal. Uh, Authorize.net, uh, you know all these uh, all these players. They, they are not in Drupal. Um, they were not in Drupal before Commerce Guys was, was actually a thing. Uh, you know tax payment uh, solutions because uh, uh, it's actually a big deal when you do e-commerce in the US. You actually be able to exactly know how much tax you need to pay depending on the on the on the uh, postal code. Uh, and uh, you know a bunch of uh, different uh, sort of players, you know, delivery players, 
uh, you know, discount solutions, uh, you know, several times payments. And, you know, we built this village where we actually managed to get all those, um, all this ecosystem to uh, DrupalCon. Uh, and you know, building a theme inside Drupalcon around commerce, and uh, that's a very good memory. It's a, it's been a fun one. I think you know it was a good contribution to expanding expanding Drupal beyond just content and uh, exposing the brand to uh, the brand and the community to actually uh, another sort of really important folks in in the web uh, the web industry. Uh, and so that, that's actually a very fond memory. We uh, we had a lot of fun building this village, and uh, we were very supported by the. Uh, uh, Drupal Association that actually saw that uh, with a you know in, in interested eye and and with a lot of um, um, uh, good uh, goodwill to help us succeed on this, so that that was a very uh, fun year. Uh, I, I have to say. Yeah, no, I remember that, and uh, one of the many reasons that that conference was awesome. Um, so I'm going to put you on the spot here. We talked about all a lot of wonderful things. It's been personally, professionally, you know, Drupal has meant, uh, you know, so many things to you clearly. Um, what is your least favorite aspect of Drupal or the Drupal community? My least favorite aspect? Um, um, I don't know that I've got something that, you know, I, I, I don't feel good about the, the community. I, I think, you know, that it's a very... It's a very open community. It's uh, it's also you know opinionated. Uh, you know the um, uh, most of the time you know I've, I've had ex especially uh, on, on on this community mostly great experiences. So I don't there's nothing standing out as uh, as something negative. I want to say about the community. I think you know the the community is um, is uh, ever and I think that's one of the challenges we are facing collectively is uh, is uh, getting a little older than it used to be. We're all getting a little older, and you know it's still the same folks around. Uh, and and I wish we would find a way to to get um, you know some some younger people involved in Drupal uh, the same way. It looks like you know we're growing with the community, uh, so it's great. You know it's great stories. We get uh, it's a lot of pleasure to meet each other again. I think you know I would love for the community to be able to to recruit more more um, uh, younger developers, and I think that's actually the challenge we are facing as a as a community. I I agree. Um... I wish the community would listen to me more. <laughs> that, would, that, that would be my gripe. <laughs> Why don't you guys always do what I want? <laughs> um, but that's what makes it a great community. And it's probably good. They don't, they don't always listen to me. Um, so uh, I want to try something new as part of this series with you because of your background in product development and running businesses. I thought it'd be really interesting to do a quick SWOT analysis with you to talk about some of the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats for the platform. Um, what do you think Drupal's biggest strength in the marketplace is today? Uh, I think it's true open source, uh, which is really you know so rare today. Uh, true open source, that's a huge strength. Amazing flexibility. Uh, Drupal is the most flexible uh, CMS solution out there by far. There's nothing as as as, uh, as well architectured as uh, as Drupal, you know. From a security standpoint, it's extremely strong. Uh, it's well thought of. Uh, so that's the the uh, the main strength. I think the um, the uh, um, the workflow for editors is also very sophisticated. You can actually build some pretty amazing uh, workflows. Uh, it's really well done. All those use cases, you know, we'll find. Um, we'll find a, a you know the best tool they can they can they can give to to. So, I mean, Drupal is the best we can find to actually build those, those experiences. Uh, so that's definitely here on, 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 on strength. So, you know, SWAT is also uh, weaknesses. So weaknesses, you know, I, I kind of touched it by my, with my comment on, you know, uh, younger developers. I think, you know, the, the, the community needs to find a way to actually, uh, uh, we need more, more new blood. We need more new people in this community. Um, and uh, more, you know, new contributors and, and, and a new level of energy. Uh, I think that's really that's really also quite uh, quite important. Uh, I would say also that uh, you know we we lost the um, the simplicity um, um, game against um, against WordPress. Uh, the uh, the uh, WordPress community has uh, has grown incredibly strong because they could actually offer a very simple way to get started. And Drupal has still this, uh, you know, the bar is pretty high to get started on Drupal. You need to learn a lot of things. And uh, it's a little overwhelming for many people. Uh, and um, WordPress uh, is killing it on, on that front. 
so definitely the uh, the access to uh, the software is is harder, uh, and um, I, I think that's challenging. I also think that's part of the uh, positioning of Drupal, you know, which is uh, definitely the, the, the right tool for uh, the more enterprisey uh, market. Uh, you know, Drupal is no tool for the SMB. It's pretty clear. Drupal is a tool for building, you know, significant enterprise experiences that require sophisticated workflows and, and sophisticated uh, uh, customizations. Uh, so from that standpoint, I think it's strong. I think Drupal has also uh, managed to actually be uh, Leveraged by all the you know, what Dries uh, called the uh, the elephants at some in some conference a couple of years ago, uh, you know the uh, well-known uh, integration partners, uh, the Accentures of the world, uh, you know they 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 are using Drupal, they they value Drupal, they have built practices for Drupal. I think that's a massive win. I think that gives uh, credibility to Drupal in the enterprise world. Uh, a lot as well. Uh, so yeah, I think you know those, those uh, the the, uh, the opportunity for Drupal is to I think continue to be actually a, a very credible enterprise uh, software. Uh, still work on simplicity. There's no reason not to actually make the, the code more accessible. Uh, to remove some of the overhead that uh, developers have when they when they get started on Drupal. Uh, probably easier said than done, but uh, I think that's actually one of the challenges we. we Trade as a community to just make the uh, the the bar a little lower uh, so more people can jump over it uh, on day one. Yeah, and uh, and threats. You uh, anything stand out in your mind? Is you know is there a Drupal killer out there? Is there something as a community that we need to be paying attention to that we don't you know that we're not doing? I mean, threats is the uh, the, con the conclusions of what I said earlier, which is you know yeah. continue shrinking. Mm -hmm. uh, and shrink and shrink and shrink more and uh, continue you know, being too complex and, and, and set the bar too high for people to get started mm -hmm. and uh, you know, become less of a meaningful thing where you know, Drupal is a, is a very, very important tool for the web development uh, world. Uh, you know, I think the, uh, there is absolutely a, an opportunity to actually remain in the uh, uh, top forces out there. Uh, if we're not careful, we might actually uh, uh, not see that any, any anymore in the future, and that's the threat. Uh, you know, technologies uh, come and go, and uh, and uh, and go, it, it actually go, you know rolls super super fast. Uh, you know, we, we there's so many so many technologies that have uh, you know shine at some point and disappeared because they couldn't transform themselves or just adapt to the new world, you know, I, I think Drupal is, uh, is well equipped. You know, I think the community behind it is very smart, uh, is, uh, is very aware of those challenges. So I, I feel this is going to be, um, you know, to, to be, uh, you know, I feel very optimistic about the future of Drupal. I really want to uh, emphasize on the fact that, you know, I feel the, the, the right people around mm -hmm. uh, can actually find the solutions for that. And, and there's awareness of those, those issues. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one bringing this up. I mean, you, every, person you've talked to probably mentioned uh, in, in a way or another the, those challenges. But uh, uh, so I think they're well understood. Um, they're also accepted. You know, it's not just uh, the fact that, you, you know, if you want to change something, you want to not only understand, but also accept and, and take action. I think, you know, all those three steps are actually happening today. Uh, so I feel confident about the future of Drupal. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Uh, so that's something I, I I see in different forums. You know, should I continue building in Drupal? Things have gotten more complex. You know, and it's, you know, Drupal's community has been amazing. But you know, some of these things are you know what have shaped and changed the community over time. You know, twenty years ago, you know, I was first involved. It was it was the SMB market. You know, it was small nonprofits. People were using it for a simple blog. And, you know, it's morphed to an enterprise platform. It, it always had a, a, a barrier to entry. You know, I, I don't know if like that uh, horrific uh, Drupal learning curve <laughs> cartoon that like gives me nightmares. Um, I'll, I'll dig that up. I don't think, you know, I don't think we should be talking about it or pointing it out, but it's funny. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's the, you know, the community has had a, a hard, you know, time transitioning in some case from seven to eight. You know the user base has changed. You know as time goes on, and um, but you know I generally think that these are really good changes. You know some of them have been hard to make, and uh, I agree. I think there's a good um, sense of what needs to be done 
Um, and, you know, just look at the marketplace, you know, businesses like yours, uh, you know, Pantheon just raised an insane amount of money. Acquia was, you know, bought out for a billion dollars. Like, you know, the economics of the, you know, the community and the business is just, you know, on fire. And so, you know, the the people with the money are are betting on the platform. And so, you know, I think we have the community that can make these changes. I think all indicators are very positive that Drupal will continue to evolve and be an even better platform into the future. And that's the only way it will exist in the future. Yep. Yeah. No, Michael, I 100% uh, agree with everything you said. Uh, and I think the, the future is, uh, is bright for Drupal. And I think, you know, the, uh, we shouldn't fear change. We should, you know, try and, uh, and uh, keep status quo. I think, you know, it's, uh, it's going to work if we keep moving and, uh, if we were aware of those uh, those uh, required changes, and if we you know take action, and uh, and I, I again I feel I feel good that this is going to happen. Definitely. So uh, last question to wrap things up: um, If you know uh, you got to pass the torch, uh, tell me uh, who should I interview next? Okay, so you've talked to Ryan. I have not talked to Ryan yet. I can't oh, I believe that. Ryan, you have to yeah. talk to Ryan. Ryan will okay. Be my absolute first uh, first choice here, yeah, Ryan Drama from uh, Centaro. Definitely, I, I don't I don't want to play favorites, but he's one of my favorite people in the show for sure. And just you know, just such a wonderful person and uh, and and a great guy. So um, I'll definitely add him to my list, uh, and we'll reach out to him. So good. I know that your super busy platform is on fire. It's so great to see. Uh, thank you so much for, for joining us and, and sharing this history and these fun stories. I really appreciate it. It was my great pleasure. Thank you very much, Michael, for this uh, very pleasant conversation. That was just uh, you know, great to have all those uh, memories back. Uh, and uh, yeah, so thanks for, for, for making that happen. Very appreciate it. Definitely. This series is so much fun for me. I, I look forward to it. Uh, I wish I, you know, I wish I could interview so many people and uh, it's, it's such a great way to, to catch up. So I, I love doing these um, to our, our listeners. If you like this talk, uh, please remember to upvote, subscribe and share it out. You can check out all our interviews in this series at tag one.com slash 20 as well as our past Tag1 team talks on all the latest technology topics at tag1.com slash talks. Uh, as always, we'd love your input, feedback, uh, suggestions. You know, you want to see us interview more people. You have topics you want us to cover in other talks. Please let us know. You can write to us at talks at tag1.com. That's tag1.com. Thank you again for tuning in. Take care.